Hello everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. Tetras are a hugely varied group of fish with big ones, small ones and all the colours you can imagine. Red phantom tetras are perhaps not the most well known in the family, but that doesn't mean they should be overlooked and they could just be the perfect fish for you. They are small, growing only to about 1.5 inches in length and a very appealing stocky body shape. Both males and females have this lovely translucent rusty red body colour and they have very distinctive black patches behind the gills and at the base of the dorsal fin. Although the consistency of these black patches does seem to vary quite a bit, with some individuals showing almost no black at all. But what do they like to keep and what kind of setup do they need? Well, red phantom tetras hail from the Orinoco tributaries of the Amazon River, where they inhabit clear, slow-moving water that is dense with vegetation, both over it and in it. And this is really important for their setup, as red phantom tetras are not the bravest of fish in the world. In fact, they can be incredibly shy, and it really doesn't take very much to spook them. Something as small as just accidentally knocking into the tank while you're feeding them will send them all scurrying off into the shadows, and once they're spooked, it can be a good few hours before they come back out again. This being the case, you will of course want to make sure that they feel as safe as possible in your tank. And the best way to do this is to give them lots and lots of hiding places, and I mean lots of them. Plenty of broadleaf plants or driftwood that they can hide under, or just places where they can duck out of sight and not feel that they are constantly being stared at by a giant but well-meaning predator right on the other side of the glass. And then somewhat conversely, if they have plenty of places to hide, they will feel less inclined to do so and spend more time out in the open where you can see them. But so long as they have those hiding places, red phantoms are surprisingly hardy when it comes to their tank conditions and they will actually thrive in temperatures as low as 20 degrees, all the way up to 29 degrees, and the pH can be really varied as well. They're perfectly happy at 5, and they can also have it as high as 8, meaning they can be kept with a wide range of other similar sized fish, including those that like higher temperatures such as discus or breeding rams, making red phantoms an ideal species to keep with what can other be quite challenging fish to find a tank mate for. Just make sure that those other fish that you're keeping them in with are fairly peaceful. Very boisterous fish, or those which nip fins, can cause a great deal of stress to your otherwise very docile phantom tetras, and this will lead them to hide even more, unfortunately. Having said this, though, my phantoms live with a very lively group of young Odessa barbs who are fast, powerful, and dare I say, rather obnoxious. And the phantoms initially kept their distance from them, after a while, though, perhaps about a month, they have learned to keep an eye on their rather rambunctious neighbours, because Odessas have something that phantoms don't, and that is a very strong hunting instinct. Odessas prowl the tank like a group of little lions, and they greedily devour any large algae pellets, or even a hapless shrimp if they happen to come across one. And when they are out hunting, those phantoms are there, they are in the background, hovering around in the shadows, just waiting to hoover up any scraps that the very messy Odessas throw out of their meal. And so I suppose, if the Odessas are like lions, then the phantoms are like little jackals, they're always there, hoovering up the scraps as soon as they're available. And red phantoms are a sociable species. They should ideally be kept in a group with at least six individuals, and this will help them to be a little bit braver. But beware, I used to actually have eight red phantom tetras, and at the moment I only have three. And that is partly because these little tetras are superb jumpers. They will jump out of the tank when they're spooked, they'll jump out of it when they're breeding, they will jump out of it when you're trying to catch them, and sometimes they seem to jump out of it just for the sake of it. And sadly, if you don't have a very tightly fitting lid, or if you just happen to leave the feeding latch open, then you will find that their numbers will slowly whittle down. But, as you will certainly initially want to buy a good sized group, you will need to have a tank that is large enough to house them all, and an 80 by 30 centimeter base dimension is a pretty good starting point. Red phantoms don't really use the entire tank area, and they will generally stay in the middle to lower zones of the water, preferring to be close to hiding places just in case something big comes along. When it comes to feeding red phantoms, they are not fussy eaters at all, but they are a little bit slow, and it can take them a while to actually show interest in food. 
They seem to need to assess a situation very carefully rather than lunging into the nearest morsel that happens to float by. And this being the case, they are susceptible to being bullied away from food by very boisterous fish. And so you will need to just make sure that your phantoms are getting enough to eat at mealtimes, keep an eye on them, and just make sure you can see that they are feeding. They will eat a wide variety of food and are perfectly happy with flakes, pellets, any of the other dried feeds, although they do like the odd bloodworm or frozen brine shrimp as well. Being tetras, red phantoms only have a very small mouth compared to the size of their body, and so you will want to be feeding either nice soft foods that they can bite at, or very small pieces that they can swallow straight down. And like a lot of tetras from South America, if you're looking to breed your red phantom tetras, then you will want to fatten them up with a nice high protein diet before you do so. And then you're going to need to set up a breeding tank. This you will want to be at a slightly higher temperature in their range, so around 27 degrees, and keep the pH nice and low at about 5.5. Red phantom tetras are an egg scattering species, and a pair placed into the breeding tank will spawn in the morning and then show no parental care at all for their eggs or young. In fact, if they come across them, they will quite happily eat them. And so you will want to remove the breeding pair as soon as they've spawned and then raise the minute little fry on separately. Red phantom tetras are easy to walk by in the shop, as people are usually drawn to their much brighter cousins like the neons. But these are charming little fish that thrive in a huge range of conditions, and so long as they have plenty of cover, they are perfect inhabitants for a community tank thanks to their small size and very gentle nature. So if you're in the market for a little fish, they are certainly worth a shot. Anywho though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video, happy fish keeping everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye! Thank you.